Welcome to another video where we're going to look at adding interactive elements to a Google slide. Um, this is very much the same as, as one of our other videos that we have on, on adding multiple choice questions to a Google slide. The key difference is the questions will not direct you to a different slide based on the wrong answer. It'll, it's, it's more of a, gate, a type of gatekeeper question. When you've gone through work, you've asked, you're asking a question. If they have the correct answer, they move on to the next work. Um, as, in with, as with the previous um, video that we made, I want to just reiterate again, this is not for, this is not to gather information about learners' understanding. This is not, and this is not the same as an informal assessment. This is simply a knowledge check for a learner that is working through the content on his own. So this requires their own um, responsible handling of this. The first thing we want to be able to do, because Google Slides naturally, if they open a slide, and they just click on it anywhere, it'll move on to the next slide. So we need to stop that from happening. Um, Google doesn't have this built in, but there's a pretty simple little trick around that. So we're going to insert a shape or draw a rectangle. And we're going to draw it over the entire slide. Now this is what you see in front of you just before I do that. Let me to explain this quickly. Um, this was simply something that I just set up using shapes, four circle shapes that I added the text to and then added some some more text to the uh, to the answer so it's a nice idea to kind of set up a little question like that before you add any interactive element first make sure that you've got what has to happen on the slide the actual appearance of the slide has that done and dusted right so yeah i've got my um my rectangle let's just quickly draw the correct one shape we'll add a rectangle and we're going to cover the entire slide with this rectangle right now just to make life easier when we're doing this, I like to give it a certain color, but we need to have transparency so that we see what's going on. So just to show you how you can use transparency, if you click on any of these colors, it'll give it a solid fill, but if you click on that little plus icon for custom, you can now select any color that you want. So let's choose something like, let's take a blue, just as an example, and here you'll see there's a transparency setting. So we can shift this down to quite low, doesn't matter what we want, we just need to see that's what's happening. Now the key thing is this block is now the, is now the front, so whatever happens is they're going to be clicking on the, this block. Now in order to make sure it doesn't move ahead, we need to give this block a link. Now the best way to do that, or the, the, the trick that we use, is to actually use the URL, the link of the slide itself. So we'll copy that, and just to show you what it looks like, the URL, that, that's this link here right at the top of your browser, this long link in this instance, that's what this link looks like, right? So I don't want it to be there, but I've copied it in my clipboard, and I'll click on the block, right click on it, and we'll say link. So we're gonna add a link to this thing. And we'll use that, right click and paste, then this link is now the link that we're gonna be using. We'll apply that. And the nice thing now, just to show you when I present, is, I can't go anywhere on the screen other than clicking on this block and the block tells me don't do anything so now we're basically stuck on this on this on this image which is exactly what we want right so now we need to make sure we need to choose an image that will move us ahead now this is the part that differs a little bit with the other from the other one so now what we're going to do is we're going to insert shape and we're going to make it a turn it make it a rectangle Correct answer is William Shakespeare. Let's, and again, you can use any shape if you want. If it's a strange um, shape, the thing that you actually want them to click on, then you can um, change your shape to whatever it needs to be. Again, let's just give this a slight uh, um, transparency so we can see where we are. Now, the key thing what's happening here that you need to keep, it in, uh, keep your head wrapped around, you've got the blue block, but this green block is on top of the blue block. So in other words, this is not going to be the link that they're clicking on and that's the key thing that you want so just to show you what's going to happen now actually that's a little bit different is if i present if i click anywhere outside of this green block nothing's going to happen but if i click in the green block i'm actually going to move to the next slide so that little trick is something we want to use but now we want to give them some kind of confirmation that they've got this thing correct now the next the next thing we want to use let's just insert an image um, just search for a simple little image you can do use any image that you want you can use text as well anything that you want 
we'll just look for an image that says correct and see if we've got something nice let's just use that first one and we'll insert it okay so then we've got it our little correct one and then the next thing that we need is we need an arrow that'll tell this thing to go to the next slide and it'll all make sense in a minute so let's say insert image um, and we want to say again let's just look for next right so there's a little button for next on some of our other videos I'll show I'll, I've done training sessions on how we can um, add buttons in a different way but this in a slightly different way but that works fine for us right so now we've got our next button and we've got a correct button but now in order for this to work sensibly we need to add a little animation to change it up a little bit so if we click on the animate button we're going to say on click this needs to fade in so that's the default setting is that it fades in on click right and this arrow we're going to we also want to add animation to this the difference is we're going to change this not from on click we can change this after previous or with previous either way it doesn't matter now lastly what we want to do now that we've got this we need to right click and say order send to back we don't need to necessarily send it to back but we need to send backwards it needs to be under the green block but more importantly it needs to be under the blue block that's the key thing remember the blue block stops us stops it from interacting so just explain quickly what we've done here what what's essentially going to happen the blue block means that if they click on the blue block nothing happens if they click on the green block it triggers the next thing it needs to happen now the next thing that happens is the correct this little correct sign that comes into play once the correct sign has come into play then this little arrow is going to appear and the last thing we need to do is we need to add um, no, not, so we need to right click on this and we make sure that this is a link as well just to show you a different place where you can say link you can click on that I usually just use the keyboard shortcut Control K that's why I sometimes struggle to find it um, in that list and now we need to select slides in the presentation we're just going to say next slide fine now let's quickly see what this looks like in practice so we're going to present and we'll see I don't see any of the rest of it I only see this my green my blue block does nothing if I click on it but if I click on my green block my correct sign appears and my little arrow appears that allows me to go to the next that allows me to go to the next slide which is exactly what we want but of course we want to just kind of make this look a little bit nicer the kind of green block around the correct answer because then there's little point to it so now we select all of it full color and say transparent make sure there's no border around it either and suddenly what we get is something that looks like this and now if I click anywhere else nothing happens but if I click on William Shakespeare right so there's a slight issue with this um, when you click on William Shakespeare again nothing happens because the transparencies get a little bit mixed up so there's a little trick to get around this it's a bit more complicated again so you're gonna have to click on on your block that you have for William Shakespeare it is on the top but unfortunately it's not being recognized now that we've got multiple transparencies the other one and this sometimes happens sometimes it doesn't it really depends a little bit on the slide so just a little trick to get around that if you go to the full color and you choose your transparency again go to plus choose your transparency now you'll see if you drag this down right to the bottom okay we're going to drag it down right to the bottom we'll select white drag it down right to the bottom we just want this to be a touch up be a little bit up from that so um, just the, this becomes a little bit technical if you look at the hex number you'll see zero zero so that means the transparency is absolutely zero we just need it to be one then it'll pick up so you won't actually see it on a presentation but the minute you do that when we go into present mode you'll see now suddenly this will work again and we've got our correct tick and we've got our next and we can move on to our slide right so it, it's 
as I said, sometimes it can be a little bit iffy with, with those transparencies, but that's just the trick to get around it. Um, now, again, just to show you how this template works, so we'll take this example again, which of the following is an image of a dog. There's no interactivity on this thing yet. We need to change this quickly. So here we've got this basic template that you can use. Now, all that you do, you need to select everything that's on this template, so, right? So drag and select, and you'll copy it. Right now we're going to paste it, so we can make sure that we copy it, and we'll paste it. Now, the one thing that requires a little bit more legwork in, in this instance than, um, than in the other templates that we've used, is you're going to have to add the, the transitions again manually. So that's not particularly difficult, so the first thing we want to do is we just move our little green block to the correct image, so there's the image of the dog. Remember that's the one that's going to be non-clickable. And this, because it's not easy to get to my to my correct little tick that we want to get to, we can just move our block out of the way, click on that, and we'll say add animation. It'll automatically be correct the rest of it. We'll click add animation. Remember to just change this to after previous. Otherwise, if you leave it on click, it's not going to appear and they won't be able to move on unless they click on the dog again, which is not an obvious thing to do. So we'll make it after previous and then you can just move this block up. Right, let's just say we're going to add this is the next content. Right, so now if we present this, we'll, we should be able to see if we click on the dog, the tick appears and the next button appears and we can go on. So you don't need to add any of the links, any all the all the links have been added for you. You just need to add the transitions again. Remember, now we're going to just take this. We'll change the transparency to being transparent again. Right, then just remember a little trick with a dog. Now, if you've done it once, you see this custom, these custom colors will remain there. These are the ones that um, you, I've used recently. So it will remember these custom colors. So if I've actually done that transparent trick once, then it'll be there and it'll just, just look like a white option. So we'll just click on that and it'll change that to the transparency that has just that one little 1% um, uh, non-transparent. It's activated and we can present it again and you'll see now our dog works. We click on it, the tick appears and you can click on the next and we'll go to the next one. Right, so this is just a slightly different way of doing it. What's nice about it is it's a self-contained thing. All of it happens in one slide. Um, and you don't need to add multiple slides and, and, and different things like that. But um, the one thing that you have to keep in mind, what's going to be slightly different for this is if we again will take this example, if they're going to present, they'll, they'll click on the others and nothing is going to happen until they click on the correct one and then they'll see that it's correct. But the bottom line is they'll be able to assess whether or not they understand. It means that you've taken the learner from being completely passive and just going to the next, 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 to forcing them to think before being allowed to continue to the next information. All right, so I, ho I hope this helps. I hope this is a nice little trick and tool that you can build into some of your presentations, especially if you're building self-directed content for your learners.